Healthy Rebel Radio is sponsored by the Healthy Rebel app. 300 plus secretly healthy, delicious, mouth-watering dessert and treat recipes made with all natural whole food ingredients. Now available for download on the App Store and Google Play. Find out more details at HealthyRebel.com. Welcome to Healthy Rebel Radio. I'm your host, Dr. David Dizer. I'm here with my Damien Health Healthy Rebel co-founder, Amy Lane. Good morning. Good morning. Just a few quick health and wellness stories to review today. We've got some big ones. I mean, it's post-Labor Day. A lot of the research that um, has been done over the last year is now being presented for this upcoming season. The, the stories that have come out in the meeting in the last few days have been just crazy. I mean, the, the first thing that came out was the, the FDA banning the sale of most antibacterial soaps. Mm. Which was huge. Yeah. Um, they People have been pushing it, um, for the ban of these soaps for a long time, but it was just this recent research that really pushed the FDA to make some moves. So what what was the basis of the... Well, that, I mean, certain chemicals in the antibacterial soaps are hormone disruptors. Right. Terrible, terrible, terrible. But what I don't understand is, there, why can't they make just antibacterial soaps without those chemicals? They can. And what they found is that the risks don't outweigh the benefits. Hmm. So, yes, I mean, there's two things I should mention. It's not just hormone disruptors, but there's this fear of super bacteria, right? Because they can evolve so quickly um, hmm. and they can become... Because we're stripping all the bacteria, good and bad. Exactly. Right. Um, it's but the same idea as, like, overuse of antibiotics. It's the exact same idea. So, but the the, the, the risks outweigh the away the benefits, right? So is it just the soap or is it these hand sanitizers too? Well, anything with the the tribenzyl... Uh, um, hold on, let me let me get the name right. Triclosan or triclo car, triclocarbon. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are the two chemicals that have been restricted. There's great anti natural antibacterial soaps, by the way. There are, and they do the exact same... Tea tree, lemon... Yeah, the, the benefits are yeah. the same. With zero, with literally no risk. Yeah, maybe um, your hands will get dried out from overuse, but exactly, and that—that's the main reason why this was done, hmm. right? Like we can't be exposing our children. They—they they find these chemicals in in breast milk. They find, oh. yeah, they—they they find these chemicals in babies who were just born. Oh, um, and it, it was animal studies that really pushed them. So they did animal studies. They found that the hormone uh, levels were altered by exposure to these chemicals. And they thought, okay, we're actually seeing them in our babies. We're actually seeing it in breast milk. We need to make some changes. Wow. Now, I've got... Now, if it's in breast milk, then women should be aware that it's probably affecting breast tissue. Absolutely, it's affecting breast tissue. Um, And who knows the, the severity of the degree. Yeah. There is one real kicker to the story that is probably going to throw a lot of people. It really threw me when I first read it. At least one place, um, after this ban comes into full effect over the course of the next year, the companies Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble have, said, have already made moves to remove them from their products. Sure. Over, over the next year, they'll be required to remove them completely. However, one place they will still remain. Colgate Total Toothpaste. Colgate has been able to show that the benefits outweigh the risks, okay. and you'll still find the tri tri um, my gosh, triclosan and triclocarbon in the in Colgate Total that one. Oh man. Yeah, brutal, eh? Yeah. It does a pretty good job on the bacteria, uh, uh, on plaque around the the I gums. Bet. So they have used that as their lobbying technique to keep it in. Oh my gosh. And it's just recently been added, really. Anyhow, pretty brutal. Uh, yeah. So the next one, um, I just want to go over this quickly. I don't know how many people it applies to, but it's about fracking. Um, fracking is a big Well, topic. it applies to everybody. It applies to everyone, but maybe people haven't heard of it. It's been a huge uh, topic of debate here in British Columbia. Um, but n- there's new studies coming out about fracking this week, and it's basically showing that these are epidemiological studies. People who live close to fracking sites, significantly more migraines, fatigue, um, and sinusitis. 
doesn't none of this surprises me. We need to stop messing with the earth. We need to start being conscious of what we're doing. Do we ever? I mean, how how much how many more of these studies need to come out? It just always comes back to this thing where I just think it's one of the funniest human traits is that humans think they're smarter than nature. Right. And every time we go and we mess with this perfect system, we cause a problem. Yeah. You know? Well, and really, that's that's a neat segue, because when when I think about holistic weight loss... Oh my god, this... What? <laughs> when I think about holistic weight loss, I think about the same thing. I think about bringing the body back to the way that nature meant it to be. Oh yeah, that, that is true. Okay, good yeah, set. Right. See? You yeah. like that? Yeah, that's good. That worked. Yeah. Fracking affects groundwater. I mean, yeah, this awful. has been shown... So, in, in the New York Times this morning, they're saying, okay, we don't know the cause. Um, we don't know why people are more fatigued. They have migraines. They have a lot more sinusitis if they live close to these sites but then another another study has shown that w- when you affect the groundwater like this we don't exactly know what's happening but something is changing um yep and 20 years from now they'll just slide it in like oh yeah it was terribly dangerous okay everyone move on <laughs> well this is this is one of the things i don't understand why cl- by why clusters of cancer around the country are not being properly investigated do you know what I mean? Like, we have, okay, we have a fracking site. We have people who have significant fatigue who live close. Because. But I know places around the country where there's significantly more rates, uh, higher rates of cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that should be investigated a lot more seriously than what it I is. I mean, I don't understand it. I've been, in, I've been close to two people that have ha- passed away from very rare types of cancers. And no one came knocking on our doors to, like, no. investigate anything. And I don't understand that. Yeah, me either. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure who's in charge of this stuff. But. Oh, I know. Like, I, I, I don't know. And it, that's where I get into the... I just... Makes me sick, the money being raised for... Yeah. Yeah. For what, what research, I, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Because it usually goes into treatment, not prevention or I know. education. And, and we have proven over and over that prevention is the, the, the absolute key. key. Key, key. So when epidemiological studies come out like this, they show, okay, if you live in this area, your risk for these certain things are so much higher. That's a huge red flag for me. It's a huge red flag. Especially when we're, these things are directly correlated to how we're treating the environment. Yep. So how else, what else are we doing to the environment that's affecting our health, you know? Everything. Everything. Talking about nature, I mean, I want to be clear about what I'm saying, this this correlation between, I mean, how can you relate fracking to holistic weight loss? When I'm talking about holistic weight loss, I'm saying um, balancing hormones. Right. Well, when we talk about holistic weight loss, like we always say, weight loss is the thing that often ropes us in. There's nothing to be ashamed of. No. We're, we're in a, being, you know, we're all trying to manage in a very vain society, but also from the aspect of like it's more comfortable when you're lighter all that but what holistic weight loss is the 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 goal the the foundation that it's set on is health right because when you are truly optimally healthy you are vibrant you are full of energy you have clarity in thinking you sleep better your hormones are balanced your skin is clear you shine from the inside out you like who you are can come forward because there's no barrier and it, that includes being light and lean and, and, and healthy on your toes. Carrying excess body fat to whatever degree isn't right for your body has negative health effects. End of story. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the negative side effects are more, you know, just mental visual. And again, there's nothing wrong. Like, there's no shame in that. I think we've gone too far with the body shaming thing. Mm-hmm. Like, no magazine shouldn't be telling us what size our waist should be or what we should look like. But at the same time, pushing back for obesity is, I think, just insane behavior. Yeah, I agree. Because it's not healthy. End of story. Yeah. So, it's about finding, you know, what lean is right for you that's right like and i mean i've done lots of different things and tested it out on my body i've i've had higher muscle mass before Mm -hmm. i've been rounder and lean you know had more body fat before and then i've been leaner 
and I find I, like what works for me. Right. That's what really feels good. Mm -hmm. Not societal expectations. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what you want to strive for. Definitely. But I just think it's so interesting. I mean, when you talk about environmental pollution, say causing fatigue, like like fracking might do. That makes it much harder to live a healthy, a balanced lifestyle. Yeah, but no, don't get into the victim stuff. No, I mean, we, yeah, we can't we can't slip into victim consciousness. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is that if if we're focusing on a balanced lifestyle, we have to look at all these aspects. We have to avoid certain chemicals that might be found in antibacterial soaps that can affect our our hormones. All of it. All as of it. as women, I mean, one of the main things I'm passionate about right now is everyone cleaning out their shower. Mm. And bring in natural shampoos, natural conditioner, natural body wash, and use natural deodorants. Yeah. Anything you put on your skin directly or ingest, I really, really, really am passionate about pushing everyone to get natural. Definitely. I'm really, really passionate about that right now. I, I see it's really scary, and I, I think it's highly correlated with these female cancers that we're seeing, mm -hmm. and also the hormone disruption, and just... You know, the the vague things like chronic fatigue and depression and hormonal imbalance. I'm really passionate about everybody loving themselves enough to just go get those natural things that work for them. Definitely. And what we're doing here is we're moving forward slowly based on the information that we have at hand. Mm. And, you know, we've learned about sulfates over the last few years. Now we're learning about um, triclocarbon. I mean, we're look at, learning about different things as we move forward. And it's a very simple thing to flip your bottle around and just check through and see if anything on the list is in your product if it is move on and the thing is is that if you just you know do like think of it as a cleanse yeah, <laughs> you exactly. know even just like a trial if you give yourself a month of using natural deodorant natural shampoo natural conditioner natural you know body wash and if you use a body lotion if you just do that and and get rid of all the other stuff and just exclusively do this think of it as a cleanse so it has a deadline because anybody can do anything for a month do it for a month you will feel and know the difference and you will not turn back right you know like i i no longer can even walk by like certain shelves in the drugstore because mm -hmm. it just automatically clogs up my sinuses and makes my head feel heavy now, that didn't happen before because I was already bogged down. I was, like, in that state, so I didn't even know that that state was a bad state. That's just how I lived. That's right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's not that you become more sensitive. It's that you realize how much better you can feel. You go to a whole new place. That's a really important distinction to, to make because then you walk through and you think, gosh, am I, am I more sensitive? Did I make this no. worse? No, no. Before you were walking around in a state of un, un, of being unwell. It's the same way with eating crap. Oh, oh my God. That's, that's probably a better example because yeah, it's like, more readily available to try. So you, t you take it out for a month yeah. and then say you do something, you eat something like you used to, like something sugar laden or whatever, pro highly processed, and you feel so crappy and you're like, oh, I'm more sensitive. Nope. That was your baseline before. Right. But you felt so good. Mm -hmm. That this is crap, and then you, and then your body comes back to its in its its intuition where it should be, where it's giving you these warning signals. This isn't for us. Yeah. Like if you're if you walk through a shelf of products and like your nose clogs up, your body's saying, uh uh, honey, not for you. Yeah, that's a bad. Sign. This is really bad. This is dangerous. Like it, we have, we've been set up with a certain level of intelligence, but we've dumbed it down. Yeah. So what I'm really passionate about is getting everyone back to their own, you know, meter so that they can read it. Because well, yeah. that's the biggest problem. Like, back in the day, like, I couldn't read my meter because I thought everything was crap. And, like, I was going from, you know, emotion to emotion. Like, I thought, like, stubbing my toe was, like, the crap. Like, I couldn't right. get to... I was abusing myself because I was so caught up in, oh, it's a bad day. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Sure. So, right now, I think one of the base things that everyone can do is, like, say, okay... I'm going to just take four weeks and try this. You know, she's bugged me enough. I'm just going to try it, yeah. you know. I'm going to do a product cleanse. I mean, and you use the word cleanse, and I think for a lot of people that can, can I don't know, bring up some negative emotion or they've heard bad things, cleanse and detox and these words. But the, the, the important thing to consider here is that the body is extremely resilient. And when you do these avoidance periods, cleanses, detoxes, whatever, your body's regenerating. Your hormones are, are able to rebalance. It's so cool. Your skin cells turn over so quickly. Your body wants to heal. Yeah. Your body wants to live optimally. Your body does not want to struggle and waste its time 
clearing chemicals. It does not want to do that. No. You're, it's got bigger you, things to do. You're, every bit of you is fighting to be the optimal you. Right. Now, you have to make the choices to comply with that so that it can do it. Mm-hmm. Period. Like, And that's where the shift is, like, remembering life is for you. Right. No matter what has happened, no matter what you've done or what has been done to you or whatever, like, life is, the deck is stacked for you. But you have to participate. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, that's a really good point to bring up. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's it's so important. Often I'll say to, to patients, don't be afraid of spontaneous healing. Yeah. And it's along the same lines as this, this mantra, life is for you. It's absolutely empowering to, to start to think that way. Well, and the thing with that is, is that I always set myself up for a surrender. I always surrender. That's why I say cleanse. Like, yeah. And I say, anyone can do anything for four weeks. I say that to myself all the time. Yeah. Right? But the point is, is that I'm also open to, I could feel amazing in three days. Yeah. My whole mind shift, my whole life could change in 24 hours. I might go be- to bed tonight and wake up tomorrow morning completely healed of whatever. Right. Or completely reset. Like, I use that often to reset a pattern. Like, if I find I'm falling into a negative behavior, I'll reset for a month. Yeah. And I'll call it a cleanse because I find that refreshing. I think of, like, cleanses like spring. Yeah. Any time of year. Definitely. You know, like, and I think fall is one of the most wonderful energies to reset i i love the fall reset we were talking about this the other day it it feels like a new it's new it's change it's i just love it i mean for a lot of people this is the start of the year this is this is the you know you get your new day timer you get your new whatever it's it's time you you look at your calendar and say okay here's what i'm going to do in this next quarter yeah before the new year we do that you know this is a whole new time for us and yeah, I mean, it's really exciting. And a lot of people are feeling that way. I've seen, you know, over the weekend, the program sales skyrocket, which we should offer probably 20% off to everyone listening today if they want to join. Yeah, we should. And I can't wait to join. Hopefully this baby gets out in the next week <laughs> yeah. so I can get on it. Yeah, that's right. But, that's right. But but it's so true. It, it is a time for a new and, you know, they're... The, the point of today's show is to highlight some environmental things, some things that we can control, some things that we should just be aware of. Um... So that we can reset. And not from a victim. Like, it's always empowering. That's right. We're, we're a smart bunch of people here on this earth. We just have to remember that. Mm-hmm. And we have to take actions daily. <laughs> you know? Instead of just going with the masses. Yeah. Take actions daily. I love yeah, wake that. up. Wake up. That's all the Rebel Radio for today. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. And if you'd like to get your episodes to your inbox once per week, subscribe to our newsletter on DamienHealth.com. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day. See you. Healthy Rebel Radio is presented by the online health and wellness center, DamienHealth.com. Since 2009, Amy Lane has successfully coached thousands of women through her signature program, the Bikini Body Program. Join today to work exclusively with Amy to unveil your greatest yet to be from the inside out. Go to DamieHealth.com for more information. Thank you for listening to Healthy Rebel Radio. Please connect with us on our community pages on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, all at the handle at DamieHealth. For weekly recipes, articles, and all our episodes straight to your inbox, join our newsletter at DamieHealth.com. You can find all the links discussed in today's episode in the show notes. Thank you for joining us and see you tomorrow.